Okay, what's up guys, Aki here. In this video I will try to fix Kantos gym leaders, even though, as I've learned while making this video, there isn't all too much to change. But I'm bored, so here I go. Also, this is like my third time trying to record this because my <laughs> recording program basically fucked me over. Uh, my microphone was picking up my breathing so much, I thought I was back in fourth grade and having asthma attacks all over again anyways should be fixed now video should be able to be processed now uh, but it will be ghetto as fuck just so you know so for the rules that i will try to follow the gym leaders are not supposed to stomp your team they are not allowed to have illegal moves or abilities they will only use pokemon that are available before the gym or immediately after i might or might not include in quotation marks gimmicks since gym leaders are supposed to test the challenger up to that point and not just destroy you. The lines they say are a bit weird, but I think that's just to hype up any kids that are playing the game and it isn't really law relevant. You know when they go, oh, I can't believe you've beat me at my best. They didn't even try, alright? But, like a kid playing the game will feel good. And for balancing reasons, I will assume that the player is sticking to the level caps of the gym's ace. And lastly, if I do add Pokemon to the team, it will be within limits. So the first two gyms can't have more than about three-ish Pokemons, the next two not more than four, etc. pp. So that by the last two gyms, they might have teams of six. With that being said, let's start with Brock. So his team consists of a level 12 Geodude with Rock Head as its ability, which is useless since it stops recoil damage and Brock won't have access to any recoil moves at his levels. Um, as for the moves it knows, it has Tackle and Defense. What I decided to do is adding Rock Throw to its moveset since Geodude learns it at level 11 and he's at level 12. And I was thinking of giving it uh, giving it Rock Tomb as well, since that's the TM you get for defeating him. And it will add to teaching the player about status raising and dropping, with the usage of Defense Curl upping his defense and Rock Tomb lowering your speed. But Onyx already has Rock Tomb in his set, so let's leave it at that. The Rock Throw will give his Geodude some coverage against a potential Butterfree that you might bring, or a Charmander. I think in Fire Red, I could be wrong, but I think in Fire Red it learns Metal Claw. <coughs> his Onyx is level 14, also has Rock Head as its ability, and knows the moves Tackle, Harden, Bind, and Rock Tomb. Honestly, his Onyx is completely fine, there's not really anything to change about him while sticking to my rules. So let's go have a look at Misty. Her team consists of a level 18 Star Ryu with the ability Natural Cure and the moves. Tackle, Harden, Recover and Water Pulse. Natural Cure is a really good ability that removes status problems upon switching out. So for the sake of this video, let's just assume that the AI would actually switch out when you're afflicted with a burn, sleep, paralysis, whatever. As for the moves, Star Wheel doesn't really learn anything by 18, so the moveset that it has is completely fine. And honestly, Water Pulse is strong enough, like it's plenty strong by itself. Now, here's my first big change. I wanted to give her a Goldeen or Krabby at first, but the player can only get those with the good rod. The old rod, which you can get after Misty though, lets you catch Magikarps. And since her Ace is level 21, I'm gonna squeeze in a level 20 Gyarados. This will also let the player reveal the Pokedex entry, and if they bought the Magikarp at Mount Moon's Poke Center, reveals to them that that shitty ass Mon actually involves into something really good and cool. Now obviously, nowadays everyone knows that Magikarp becomes Gyarados, but back in the day, it was something really sick. Anyways, I'm just rambling, okay? I decided to give him, as its ability, Intimidate, teaching the player that it can be smart to switch out, and or that, a uh, that special and physical attacks are a thing, like th those are two separate types. Even though in Generation 3, so Fire Red and Leaf Green, which I'm making this video for, didn't have the physical special split yet. As for its moveset, it will have Bite, Water Pulse and Splash. And since its stats can be intimidating at this point in the game, it will always, like in this hypothetical fight, it would always go for Splash first. 
and then after it uses bite or water pulse it will go for splash again. As for our ace, it's a level 21 Starmie with the ability Natural Cure, which is completely fine. And as for the moves, it knows Rapid Spin, Swift, Recover and Water Pulse, since it can't know anything else. We can leave it at that. Her, star her, her Starmie is fast as fuck and has a pretty good special attack. So, like I said, I'm not trying to make the gym leader stomp the player. I just want to make him a bit more challenging give him a little bit more of a variety and in some cases make better usage of what the team can potentially do but in some cases as you will see i just stuck with what game freak did which is stupid but i think it's funny but you will see that later on next up is search whose team consists of Voltorb at level 21 with the ability Soundproof, which I'm pretty sure is completely useless in Generation 3. So I swap that with Static. And it knows the moves Shockwave, Tackle, Screech and Sonic Boom. Those are all completely fine. Sonic Boom can catch you off guard since it always deals 20 damage and if you are like a bit under leveled or if you have bad HP stats, it will hurt because it's always just straight up 20. Screech is kind of useless on him, but like I said, I'm not trying to make him have access to things that the player doesn't have access to, so I didn't give him any egg moves or TMs that you don't have, or give him access to move that they learn later on. Like, yeah, I could have given his Voltorb the ability to set screens, but that would be kind of shitty, because he learns those later on at like, I think it's like level 28 or 32 or something, so I didn't want to do that. His Pikachu is level 18, also with static, no shockwave, thunderwave, quick attack and double team. And his ace is a Raichu at level 24 with static and knows the same move as his Pikachu. Honestly, if you think this is too easy, right? Because I didn't really, I didn't touch him at all, actually. But try to do this without going into the Diglett cave and getting like a good ground type. It's honestly harder than you think. I did a challenge run or like I'm working on it where I only use Pokemons from the next route like the immediate connecting route to beat the gym leader and it can get pretty hard especially in what is it Sab uh, Sabrina city I always forget what it's called the only encounter you can get there is in the city itself and it's either a Hitmonlee or a Hitmonchan in doing the whole city only with that mon, especially the rival fight, it can get really, really hard. So again, I'm not trying to make the gym leaders insane rom hack difficulty fights. I just want to tweak them a little bit. That's why the, the fixing is question mark, because it's not really... I was surprised that the gym leader fights in this game are actually really well designed. Anyways, with that being said, let's move on to... Uh, yeah, the, I wrote it here in the... It's not a script, it's more like bullet points. But I wrote that, honestly, I can't really change this team since all of them use the moves they have access to at that point. Again, I want to reiterate, I'm not trying to make the gym leaders a really tough challenge by giving the moves the player doesn't even have access to or doesn't get access to after a while after beating the gym. So I could give his team egg moves or moves they learn way later, like light screen for Volto, but that's not what I'm trying to do. So his team is well designed. Moving on to gym 4, Erika, Erika, the woman that likes plants. With a te team consisting of a level 24 Tangela, with which, she, uh, which will be her lead. And since her whole team has the chlorophyll ability, I'm gonna switch out in grain with Sunny Day. Which the player can get in the Safari Zone. Fire Red is actually way more open world than some people realize. The player can in fact have access to it as well. This gym will teach the player about weather. Basically in Fire Red, uh, once you beat Surge, the game opens up by like a lot. You can... I'm pretty sure you can go to Erika, do the... Uh, not the Silph code, the game corner thing, get the Silph code, Go to the tower, uh, do the whole Marowak uh, Team Rocket thing, then go beat her, 
or you don't even have to beat her because you can already get the bike so you can go down to Koga. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. Anyways, um back to topic. I'm rambling way too much. Let me get this over and done with. So swap out the I don't wanna edit this man. <laughs> In grain with sunny day. The other moves are Constrict, Poison Powder and Giga Drain. Those are fine as is. A level 29 Victory Bell, the moves it knows are Stun Spore, Acid, Poison Powder and Giga Drain. Fine in itself, but since there's way too much overlap, I'm gonna switch out Poison Powder with Growth and Stun Spore with Knockoff, just in case the player is holding an item and if they weren't paying attention, now they are. And her Vileplume, also at level 29, who knows Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, Acid and Giga Drain. I'm gonna leave this moveset as it is, since her mons have good enough stats. And if you haven't dealt with a sunny day by now, the fight will be challenging enough without adding something crazy like Sludge Bomb or a new team member. All in all, her team is good and all she really needs is a tweak by adding sunny day to make use of her chlorophyll ability, since her whole team has it. But none of her team can set up weather. I know that Gen 3 is the one that introduced weather. So I'm just making use of that. On to Koga, whose team I will not touch just because I think it's hilarious that he has three smoke screeners, two of which no self-destruct and are not afraid to use it, topping it off with a minimized acid armor spamming toxic having muck. If you can't outspeed, or no moves that can't miss like Aerialize, good luck. I genuinely think this team is funny. For the 6th badge, <coughs> excuse me, we have Sabrina, who is going to lead with a level 37 Mr. Mime, whose soundproof ability I am going to swap with Technician, and its moveset is Barrier, Psybeam, Baton Pass and Calm Mind. Since Baton Pass could be too strong with the moveset changes I'm about to make, I will first switch this with Reflect, and while I'm at it, swap Barrier with Light Screen, making this her screen setter. Psybeam will be replaced with Confusion to make sh uh, to make use of Technician, and Calm Mind can stay since it doesn't have Baton Pass anymore. The player will most likely be able to deal with Mr. Mime even behind screens if it even gets them up, because its defensive stats are like bottom of the barrel. A level 8, a 38 Venomoth will be completely replaced with a Jinx since the player can get one via trade in Cerulean City. So this isn't something that you can't have at this point, you can in fact. Uh, she will have the ability Oblivious and her moveset will consist of her signature move, Lovely Kiss, Powder Snow, Double Slap and Lick. Kadabra and Alakazam are fine as they are, if you can't deal with them they will hit hard, if you can they won't take much of a hit. Moving on to the penultimate gem leader. Belain. This is one of the things I was talking about with I'm just doing what Game Freak did. I just think it's funny so I didn't do too much. First off, I'm giving him a Moltres. I'm joking. Seriously, in addition to his base team, I'm giving him a full team of 6 by adding Vulpix and Ninetales with the Flashfire ability since I already gave Erika weather ability so I didn't want to give him Drought. I will leave his 4 base members as is so I will just move on to the new additions. His new Vulpix will be level 44, knowing the moves Will-O-Wisp, Confuse Ray, Safeguard and Grudge, because why not, could work, could not, it's a Haymaker, it's a Hail Mary, it's funny. Ninetales will be at level 45, knowing the moves Quick Attack, Flamethrower, Will-O-Wisp and Confuse Ray. Nothing crazy, but also not super easy, and I think this makes his team look cleaner, with the whole having, you know, the Fire Morn pre-evolution and then the evolution, and the addition of a strong special attacker and Ninetales and Will-O-Wisp to stop the player from bulldozing with strong physical attacks. Adds a bit of a challenge and rounds it all up nicely. So you have the Growlithe and the Arcanine, uh, the Ponita and the Rapidash, the Vulpix and the Ninetales. So, lastly, we have Giovanni. Immediately, I will be giving him a 6th member in Marowak and swapping out his level 50 Rhyhorn for Rhydon with the ability Reckless, powering up moves with recoil damage. The moveset will be Takedown, Rock Blast, Ice Beam and Earthquake. I think it's fair to give his team the Game Corner TMs since it's run by well, Team Rocket. His Nido King will have Rock Smash instead of Double Kick and Iron Tail instead of Poison uh, Sting. 
This Nido Queen will have Thunderbolt instead of Double Kick and Surf will replace Poison Sting. I won't touch his Duck Trio except for giving it Tri Attack instead of Slash because why doesn't it have Tri Attack? Nor his level 45 Rhyhorn. I'm trying to make him a formidable but fair last gym leader, the last challenge before the Elite Four, but I'm not trying to go overboard. Again, this video isn't about making them... Honestly, the, the fixing is a wrong wording, but I'll get to that in the outro. Uh, yes, his Nido King and Queen will now be like a proper challenge with good coverage moves, but the player has access to those moves as well and can see the power of the TM they will be getting in this fight because most of his team has like Earthquake or if not... Yeah, not all, but most. The newly added member Marowak will be level 46 with Lightning Rod as its ability because it's funny and it will know the moves Bone Meringue, Thrash, Focus Energy and Bone Club. Those are the changes I would make to the Kanto Gym Leaders. Honestly, I was seriously surprised by how well they actually designed. Especially since it... I think they made it so like they know the last for level up boost or something like that, right? Um, I generally thought though I would have to make way bigger changes, but I just needed some tweaks, if at all, that will probably change if I make more of these videos though, especially Yoto, because if I remember correctly, I think Falkner doesn't even use Yoto birds. He has like a Pidgey and a Pidgeot. He doesn't have a, a Zatu, he doesn't have a Natu, he doesn't even have a Hoot Hoot. He doesn't like. Anyways, remember, re just rem remember. I wasn't trying to give him a team worthy of being like a champion fight. I just wanted to make him feel more like a challenge while still trying to make it feel like it belongs in a mainline game. So I didn't try to go overboard. I could have given them all fucking insane Smogon teams that was not or is not the purpose of this video. Especially important to me was not giving them access to Pokemon, Pokemon itself moves or health items they shouldn't or the player can't have access to. Which is why I didn't give Surge a Magnedon or Electabuzz for example. This isn't me saying that the games never did that, giving them access to stuff the player can't have access to at that point. I just don't like doing it. Also that would be kinda... You could even say it's easier to just give them cracked out moves and cracked Pokemon. So yeah, with all that being said, thanks for watching, take care. And don't get bullied. Bye-bye.